Revelation 4013. From the 1st of April 1947. Will of the essential in the must state. Even in the state of imperfection before its embodiment as a human being the spiritual being has a will, only that it is unfree, that it turns away from me and towards my adversary, so to speak, but that the spiritual being cannot strive towards the adversary but is pulled up by me, thus it has to forcibly insert itself into my order of eternity and thus the distance from me is reduced. But the beingness can also be completely without will that is neither strive towards me nor my adversary, then it is now also without resistance towards me, and this state is sufficient to provide it with easier conditions of development. The giving up of resistance therefore means that for the time being my adversary has been eliminated, that the being no longer pushes towards him, thus its will no longer seeks this direction. Then it no longer resists me either and it can now be touched by my strength, which has such an effect that their will now stirs to unite with the strength after all. But the being itself is not aware of its will since it remains in profound ignorance, thus a state of spiritual blindness and darkness surrounds the being until its development has already progressed and it slowly becomes aware of its will. However, even then it is not able to use its will correctly, it is still determined to be active by my will, that is, the being cannot use the strength it receives from me for the purpose of ascent development other than in accordance with the law of order, until it reaches the last stage of its development on earth, until it embodies itself as a human being and is then given back the free will it once possessed but misused. To a certain extent it has now given up its resistance against me even if it is not yet aware of it. However, otherwise it would never receive the grace of embodiment as a human being, it would not be admitted to the last test of earthly life, if it had not given up its resistance against me insofar as it no longer strives towards the adversary. If I pull it upwards during the endless long course through the whole of creation in bound will, it must, however, then continue the course upwards in free will, otherwise it can very easily fall back into the previous state where it turns towards my adversary again and is then immediately seized by him and pulled down into the abyss. As a human being the being is then no longer without responsibility, whereas in the state of bound will it is deprived of responsibility, it can only remain in resistance against me for eternities if, deprived of all strength, it does not desire any grant of strength from me. For then the being is sensitively in an unhappy state, and every grant of strength improves this state. But if the being resists the supply of strength by not wanting to undergo any activity but remains inactive for eternities in defense of the strength from me, it also remains in resistance to me and cannot be helped until it no longer resists but accepts the strength flowing to it from me and becomes active, even if in the law of compulsion. But every activity is redeeming and leads upwards. Every supply of strength is love for the imperfect, and every acceptance of strength means giving up resistance against me and must lead to redemption even if at first the being itself has no merit in it but carries out the activity under a certain compulsion. Nevertheless, activity means life, and life means the giving of my strength. If the being now receives this strength from me to an increased degree, then its resistance will have become ever smaller until it completely submits to my will. Thus it would also carry out the same activity if this were dependent on the being's free will. Yet it will only be admitted to the test of its will in the stage as a human being, and then it can consciously use its will, and if it uses it in the right direction it will redeem itself completely while it lives on earth. Amen.